What's up folks? Welcome to another episode of the Tin and Sleepy Fin Show. No, it's cold out here. It's very, very cold. Got a couple hours to fish and on the way over here it was sunny. And as we got closer and closer, it got cloudy and the temperature dropped like eight degrees. So it's 44 degrees. The wind is blowing pretty hard out of the north and it's damp. It's just one of those cold, cold days. You got a little front pushing through. It's supposed to warm up on the back side of this in the next couple of days, but today not the case i'm like fighting fighting gloves and uh definitely got the sock cap on the hoodie up i'm wearing the rain gear and ben's all snuggled up but what we're gonna do today since we don't have a lot of a lot of time is we're gonna throw something that kind of gets overlooked in the winter time and it's a soft plastic jerk bait just a fluke style bait the water has risen we've gotten a lot of rain over the last week and a half and some of these fish are up shallow in the grass and it's a little tricky throwing a jerk bait around the grass. So, you know, why not try a soft plastic jerk bait? Now, we're gonna see if this is gonna work or not. I think I think we can cover some water and catch at least a couple fish. The water is 38 degrees, folks. It's very, very cold. So it's not something that um, you typically think about is throwing soft plastic jerk bait. But we're gonna try it today. We're gonna see what happens. I'm throwing on a 15 pound test. So a little bit heavier gear. Um, I've got this seven foot medium heavy. This is the Virtus Jewel Acura series. By the way, proceeds from this rod go to the Autism Society, which is pretty cool. And we're just throwing on a seven to one gear ratio. Luge reel. I love this bluff behind us. We're out of the wind. This is a north facing, south facing bluff on the north side of the lake. So it's kind of hanging out so we can do this audio, but not a lot of time. I'm gonna hit some high percentage areas cover some wood, just some grass pockets and stuff. And uh, maybe we can scratch up a few fish before it's time to put the boat on the trailer. Hey, give me a thumbs up if you've been appreciating the content that I've been doing throughout the winter. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Tournament season's starting here real soon, so we will have some tournament footage for you. I'm gonna be fishing some BFLs in the LBL division, maybe some BFLs in the Ozarks division, and we're gonna do the Anglers in Action team trail again with Mr. Mike Marfell, M Square. Um, so look forward to that. And I've got to put this camera down because I'm about to crash into the rocks. Anybody out there know who this is? Raise your hand. Ah, you do, exactly. For those of you that don't know, this is a fluke. This is a Zoom Super Fluke. It's one of those baits that used to be a staple years ago and you just don't hear a lot about it of course when you're on a blueback herring lake it becomes more popular but in normal everyday fishing nobody really talks about a fluke i know people still fish them but you just don't hear much about this bait anymore not only does it catch fish just as good if not better than it ever has it's not limited to warm water this is something that you can throw in the cold water period it's a great alternative to a hard jerk bait. There he is. There he is on the old flute, man. How about that? go folks it's cold out here but if you slow down enough you will catch a fish some little sneaky all right feels good just trying not to get my hands wet because it's like 38 degrees out here and we do have a wind chill and uh water is about 40 about 40 degrees so anywhere from 39 to 41, depending on where you're at. And uh, we're just poking around. 
So I'm a little bit different. Water, water's up, man. I mean, water came up about two feet from last time I was over here, and it's been down several feet for I don't know, like five, six months. So there's a lot of a lot of new stuff in the water. Now there's a lot of people that fish a fluke style bait in the spring, but it's not talked about much in the cold water period. And it can be really, really deadly. There are times when the fish are relating to wood and hard cover. And there are a few options in a hard jerk bait, but it's really finicky, it's really technical fishing when you're throwing a bait that's got three treble hooks and a small bill down the side of a log. This can be a really good alternative to the to fishing hard cover, like a lay down or a log or something of that sort. It also shines in grass. In the area we fish, there's a lot of grass and the fish stay in the grass all year long. But working a treble hook bait through the grass is, um, it can be a pain in the butt. And a lot of times that's what you need to be doing as the water starts to warm up, that grass gets real slimy and you're constantly cleaning that grass off of the hook. So this is a great alternative to fishing when you need a jerk style, a jerk bait style bait, fishing it around grass. A couple things to note on the soft plastic jerk bait. First, let's talk about colors. You're, you're mimicking shad here. This is albino. This is probably, uh, this is one of my top three colors for sure. I really, Really feel the albino quite a bit. I throw it in a swim bait a lot, uh, underspin, just any kind of, it's it's a great shad color, I guess is what I'm getting at. Green pumpkin, another excellent color. There is Arkansas shiner, there's disco violet. There's, there's several really good looking shad colors out there, but the key is get something that mimics a shad. And there's different sizes, there's the Standard Fluke, there's the Super Fluke Junior, there's the Super Fluke, and then there's other brands of the Fluke style bait as well. And they and they all work really good. So just whatever's available to you, um, go out there and get it, get a few shag colors. As far as the hook, um, two options guys on this. Some people like an EWG, and that's great too. Cause this is, you know, this has got a lot of plastic, but it also has this belly slit. So you're actually not penetrating through a ton of plastic. The profile looks really thick and meaty, but you don't have a lot of belly. They've trimmed the fat out of this. There's not a lot of belly in here, so you can use a smaller hook. Um, I used to use just an EWG style hook, but I've kind of started using just a round bin hook, you know, just a traditional worm style hook. And um, it works, it works great. It gets the hook back a little bit further, which I like, and I like the angle. I mean, I just, I like the angle of this. So as of right now, today, this is the hook that um, I prefer on a fluke style bait. You can see I've got it rigged through the side like this. Uh, there's a reason for that. That's to slow the fall. There's a couple different ways to slow the fall and this can be very important in cold water. You know, you can catch in this video, the fish, I was fishing in like 37 to 40 degree water and still catching fish on it. But this, the fall rate is critical. Just like a hard jerk bait, Fall rate, suspend rate, rise, you know, sometimes they want it rising, sometimes they want it suspending, sometimes they want it falling. Well, you can't make this suspend, you can't really make it rise, but you can control the rate that it falls. And a couple ways to do that, hook size is one way. Um, this is just a three-aught hook. You can go to a four-aught hook, which is going to make it fall a little bit faster. And then if you go from a standard wire to like a super line type of hook, it's going to fall even faster. I've turned this sideways. The reason I turn this thing sideways is to slow the fall. It has more surface area, so it's really going to fall slower versus the normal way to rig up a fluke is you come in straight through the nose and you're lining that hook point up with that slit in the belly, just like any other soft plastic bait. And you come through that little, that little slit. And boom, so that's that's a normal way. Now this is really gonna dart, and this is okay when the water warms up a little bit more, but it's not a bad idea to try both ways and see what the fish like. The other way is a swivel. You can really control the rate of fall with a swivel. Um, this is a Spro size 4, 130 pound swivel. Spro makes some of the best swivels on the market, hands down. So this is like my standard size swivel that I go with. 
Um, you can go with a really big swivel. This is like a size one, so that's gonna make it sink a lot faster. Or you can go with like a size six or something, which is a little bit smaller. I tend to go this size, which is a four or smaller. So moving up in, in number because this is plenty fast. I mean, this falls plenty fast. I don't want it to fall much faster than this. So I'm, I have a tendency to go with a smaller swivel to control the fall. And the other reason you want to use a swivel is because these things do have a tendency to twist, especially when you rig them a certain way. Um, and this, this will eliminates, this keeps a lot of the twist out of your main line. So you don't have to worry about it as much. Now, sometimes when the fish are being really finicky, I won't even, I won't even put a swivel in there because that slows the fall even more. You just got to pay attention. You know, every once in a while you got to kind of, um, I don't know, you got to check your line. You're going to get some line twist in it, but you can usually, if you're paying attention, you can usually, um, just stretch that line out as you're reeling in, put your fingers on the line and it, and it, it encourages that line twist to come out into the water. But either way, um, it's all about that fall rate and the line twist. Typically I'm going with like 12 pound test, 12 to 15. I think we got 15 pound test on this, but anywhere from 12 to 15 pound test. And you know, I use a bait caster most of the time, but there's nothing wrong with using a spinning rod as well. In fact, that's, I mean, I, I don't prefer either one. I just got a bait caster right now, but you do need like a medium to a medium heavy. This is that Virtus Acura series. This is their all purpose seven foot medium heavy, but it's got a, it's got a softer tip. So it's not a heavy, medium heavy. It's more of a medium, medium heavy. And that's what you need. You need something that's going to allow those fish to kind of load up on it. And it's a cool technique. It's a, just a twitch, twitch and just let it fall most of the time. You know, you're kind of watching your line. Um, a lot of times the fish will pick it up and your line will just slowly move off. There's other times where your line will just jump. And sometimes when you're hitting it, you see that bite, especially if you're fishing it up towards the surface, you'll actually see them roll up on it. And it's a, it's a visual bite. It can be exciting. The warmer the water gets, the more aggressive you can work that jerk bait. Right on that log. I'll be damn. It's a good fish, guys. Good fish. <laughs> oh yeah, baby. Go, look at that. Get sneaky with it. That's a fine specimen. That fish is thick. Dang. Oh man, just a, something you don't hear about a lot in the winter time. Just throwing a soft plastic jerk bait for these fish. That's a good fish. I just twitched that, let it sink, and it just got heavy. I thought I was in grass, and I was not in grass. I was in a bass. Look at that sucker, man. That is a little tank. Wow. Hey, thanks for checking out the video. Give me a thumbs up if you appreciate the content and a subscribe would be greatly appreciated. This is one of those baits that is just kind of disappeared over the last, I don't know, 10 years or something. There's still people that fish it, but it's just not talked about. And that's one of the reasons why I feel like you should go out there and give it a try. Give it a resurgence. It still works. It works just as good, if not better than it ever has, because a lot of people aren't throwing it, especially in the cold water period. So next time you get a nice stretch of sunny weather even if the water's in the 40s you get three or four days of sunshine those fish have a tendency to pull up shallow and they'll get next to hard cover um, around grass try this tie one on throw it for a couple hours 
see if it works. It's very, very deadly in the right situation. And I think it'll bring you some few, a few fish come this uh, late winter and early spring. Till next time. The sucker right there is built. Look at that. I mean, that's the longest fish. God, look how wide he is. This is a beautiful little fish. Let's let it go. Cold. <laughs>